Okay, so let's get started. So, what is Streamer? <clears throat> we aim to tokenize the value in real-time data. So, to understand what that means, uh, let's consider, for example, a self-driving electric car. Now, for the car to deliver the best possible passenger experience, it constantly needs data from other machines, such as traffic congestion information from other cars, um, electricity prices at nearby charging stations, weather forecasts, and so on. So what Streamer does is it provides a single interface for the car to go and subscribe to the data that it needs and pay for it using a cryptographic token called the Streamer data coin which lives on the Ethereum blockchain. Now, the car is also a data producer, right? So it can go and sell the data that it produces, like traffic information, uh, road condition measurements to smart cities, passenger blood sugar level to nearby advertisers, and so on. So a data stream economy is born. A machine can go and place data that it produces on the marketplace and other machines or organizations or application developers can go in and trade data. Streamer is implemented as a decentralized peer-to-peer -peer network for data delivery. So a data source can connect to any node in the network, publish a new data point, and it instantly gets delivered to valid subscribers. Um, the network is built to achieve scalability, so it scales horizontally up to potentially billions of events per second via a clever sharding scheme. Now this means that nodes in the network have um, asymmetric responsibilities for, for partitions in the data. So we're talking about an off-chain companion network which connects to a related blockchain for security critical operations such as um, value transfers and access control. Decentralization is achieved by allowing anyone to run a node in the network, um, <clears throat> which means that the network is effectively run by its users instead of giant corporations. And it also means that you own, control, and monetize the data that you produce. Decentralization also means that the network is more robust against attacks and node failures, ensuring the delivery of messages uh, in all circumstances. So, in addition to the scalable messaging infrastructure that we're building, we're building two applications. A marketplace will allow the data producers and the data consumers to find each other. So it's like the Amazon for data streams. All the, all the data streams in the world, right? <clears throat> and, well, raw data is usually not very useful as is. It needs some kind of processing, some kind of computation uh, to extract the value in the data. So, for example, aggregation, filtering, combining to other data streams, visualizations, automation, stuff like that. And for this, we are creating the Streamer engine. The Streamer engine has uh, an interface called the editor, uh, which is based on visual programming. And it looks like this. So, you can seamlessly combine powerful off-chain analytics and visualizations with, for example, on-chain smart contracts. Now this is up and running. Uh, you can sign up, start using it right now. The underlying technology is still centralized, but we will be um, decentralizing that kind of layer by layer in the future. By having these kind of centralized training wheels, uh, if you will, we can deliver value to the community from day one and keep working from there. So I'll be doing a live demo, which is kind of a full stack uh, demo, touching on 
all the layers uh, here except the marketplace, which doesn't exist yet. Uh, but the most visible part, uh, of course, will be the interface, which is the editor. But you'll see how, how off-chain computation happens in the engine, how data travels in the streamer network, and how we interact with an Ethereum smart contract. So let's see what happens. It's always crazy to do a live demo in a presentation, but I'll, I'll take the risk. So let's see what happens. Here's the interface. I'll just zoom in a little bit so I can see better. Okay, so we start with an empty canvas. We call them canvases. Um, I'll add a data source first. It's called public transport demo. Now, a box appears with various fields in the data. Now, to see what the data looks like, I'll add a map. And let me just connect a few fields from here. I'll connect the vehicle ID to ID and latitude and longitude to the map. And I'll hit start. And now, if everything is working, we should see what's happening. So, this is a data stream from the Public Transport Authority here in Helsinki. So, we have um, sensors in many of the public transport vehicles, like trams, buses, metro, uh, trains. And each of them are constantly transmitting their position, speed, heading, line number, and whatnot. Uh, and we're um, ingesting that data onto the streamer platform, and this is what it, what it basically looks like. So, if you zoom in, you can see that, that some of the markers are actually uh, moving in there. Now, let's do some kind of uh, imaginary use case here. So, let's say I'm, I'm the city of Helsinki. I'm the king of Helsinki and you're a uh, public transport operator company, and I'd like to hire you to run public transport vehicles in my city, right? And we could do like a fixed deal. I pay you one million per month or, or whatever, but that doesn't give me any guarantees about the quality of, of your service. So instead, let's agree on some kind of metric, a key performance indicator, and I'll pay you um, by, by that. So, okay, let's agree that I pay you in crypto uh, 100,000 way for each meter uh, traveled by, by all your vehicles in total. So, we can calculate that from the data, right? From the raw data. What's the distance traveled by all of them uh, in total? And I can make you, I can keep making um, payments as we go to your, your company. So what we need is a smart contract that can handle that um, and a way to call the smart contract every once in a while based on the raw data here. So one cool thing we have in the platform is a module called Solidity Module. Um, <clears throat> and we can use this to make a smart contract directly in the, in the interface. So I'll just, I'll just tab to a piece of code I have here. Okay, so we have a smart contract written in Solidity. Uh, the most interesting uh, simple function here is one called update, which basically just does multiplication. Multiplication. So we report the uh, measured payment metric, like meters traveled, to the smart contract and it calculates uh, how much we need to pay. So I press apply. And what I get here is the constructor parameters. Okay, who do we pay? How much do we pay per meter? 100,000. Let's initialize the contract with some ether in there and hit deploy. Okay, so now once the deployment of the contract gets mined, we can start uh, interacting with it on the canvas. Now, meanwhile, let's build the logic. So we need to calculate from the raw data the aggregate distance traveled and every once in a while commit that to the blockchain. So we don't want to make a, a blockchain transaction for each data point because there's like uh, 400 events per second coming in from the data stream. 
So instead, um, let's calculate up to a threshold and then commit that to the blockchain and then start again. So we're kind of um, making these batches. Okay, now we can see also that the smart contract got mined and we can see the address over there. So let's set up the interaction with the um, smart contract. So I'm going to connect this one here, Ethereum call, and choose the function we want to call, so update. Okay, so this part is now ready. Over to this input, we want to report the uh, metrics, but first we have to calculate them. We can have abstractions on the canvas, so we can have canvases within canvases, within canvases. So, yo dog, I heard you like canvases. So let's select something that I pre-made, um, just to make this a little bit easier to show. So I'll connect the vehicle ID over here and the speed as well. So I'm going to calculate the distance from speed multiplied by time, high school physics. Not the distance between GPS points because they're very noisy. Okay, let's see what this looks like. So we have an output called current, which gives out the current value of the accumulation. We have a parameter called, called threshold. Now it says thousand. So I'll show you what it means. So this is how we can visualize data easily. So it keeps accumulating the distance metric up to a threshold, which is now 1000. And once it reaches 1000, it should reset back to zero. And at that time, we should get an event out from the, the other input on this module. So boom, there we go. So that would be the moment when we can, for example, commit this payment uh, onto the blockchain to just have these small aggregates in there instead of flooding the block blockchain. So let's do that now. That's the final step remaining. So I'm going to connect the batch output to the added unit input on the update function. And now <clears throat> we'd like to verify that this is actually doing what it's supposed to be doing. So I can add something that shows me what's coming out of there. So another cool thing, so now we're kind of um, pushing the data from off-chain onto the blockchain and we'd like to have a feedback connection from there as well. So we'd like to know what's happening on the blockchain by listening to events on the blockchain. So we have an event called paid amount. I'll connect that to the table. And now we're ready. And the pressure intensifies. Can we reach 1000? It's a bit too high, right? This second seems so long to me. So long. Okay, boom. Now there should be a transaction where that's being mined. We can check on, on Etherscan. There should be something here. Okay, we have a transaction pending here. Uh, this is the, the payment. And once it's mined, we should also get um, the, the feedback onto this table. So there should appear a row, uh, a new row. Yes, there it is. Oh, it worked. Perfect. So I'll show you what we actually, um, what we actually did here. Just let me stop that. So there's a data source, in this case the, the public transport vehicles. It's producing data to the streamer network, which transports it to a subscriber application, in this case the streamer engine. The streamer engine calls the smart contract on the blockchain. From the blockchain, the um, data comes back, the feed, we get the feedback from the blockchain back to the streamer engine which updates the visualization that we have by producing an update 
uh, to a stream on the streamer network and our browser, which is the application that we see, listens to user interface updates from the network. So we have like a full, full circle of, of real-time um, messaging going from the sensor to the blockchain, coming back to our user interface. Okay, so how many of you are developers, by the way? Okay, cool. How many of you are um, traders, crypto traders? Right, okay, good. Good to have so many developers here. Uh, how do developers today develop applications? When they start doing something, they select from the available set of tools, nowadays usually cloud services, uh, what they need for their application. Right, so you have virtual machines like on Amazon, you have EC2, you have block storage, um, you have hosted databases, you have uh, real-time data uh, pipelines like Amazon Kinesis, and you have microservices like Lambda. Now, my hypothesis here is that all of these services will be replaced by decentralized counterparts. So, for example, we have uh, Golem um, stealing some of the business currently with, uh, with, the, with EC2. We have Swarm and IPFS and such um, offering decentralized block storage. Um, now, Streamer is there to replace the um, real-time messaging pipelines and to some extent the analytics and, and microservice components found in various cloud. Um, services. And now, of course, Ethereum, the blockchain, is something that's completely new, so it doesn't exist on the, on the left side of this chart. And what it does is it offers uncheatable um, state transitions, right? And by offering that, it enables the decentralization of all the other layers uh, in there. And this is what I think we'll end up with. So, in the future, you might write an application that gets run in a container. For example, the Golem container. You have the application there. And available to the application are layers of clients for various services, like the streamer client, streamer node, can be like a light client there. Uh, the Ethereum client, maybe IPFS or whatever, and your application will be able to um, access these, use these, and run in, uh, in the kind of decentralized space of available uh, computing power out there. Right, so you can write your application, it can be a, a web backend um, or, or, or a microservice or whatever, uh, and you can have a decentralized application written with with traditional languages, uh, which is very cool. Um, how to find us? So visit our website, streamer.com. Also follow us on Twitter. You can join our community chat at chat.streamer.com. And I'd like to say that we are hiring. So all of you developers in the audience, um, please get in touch. Uh, we're based in Switzerland but we also have um, a team in Finland that we're working with, so, so um, you're welcome to learn more about that. We make your streams come true. Thank you very much. <laughs>